So my ML10 again, a little bit further on. I thought it was timely now to show you um, some of the well, progress is progress, although not much, but anyway, what I've done up until now. And um, <clears throat> how also the decision to uh, install the motor for the ELS, the set axis like this, and also the X axis as you see down here, and Y. Um, from a point of view of, uh, of uh, driving the, the lead screw in the way that the ELS, I mean, this is going to be an ELS operated machine, but also then retaining the basic possibility that you have with rapid feed, in this case an ML10, through the use of the, of the um, directly on the lead screw here, but also then with the hand wheel cranked normal operated lead screw with the clasp nut. Uh, so manual. Uh, on the um, set axis then, um, the manufacturer of the ELS states that it is preferable to have a one-to-one -one connection. So in this case I have uh, opted to, to run it like uh, you will see here. Uh, on going a little bit in here. See that I have two equally sized or number of um, cogs wheels or pulleys. So driving a timing belt here, a synchro belt, a one to one. From this, which is the normal uh, stepper, and I've on the other uh, Super 7s, I have the hybrid stepper where, uh, as you have. Also an encoder at the, at the rear here of the of the motor. But anyway, anyway, um, this is uh, made in this uh, say way because of the fact that on this, of course, uh, I did not have any any. Uh, this was not a complete machine, so I did not have any any tumbler reverse. I did not have any wheels or change gears here. I didn't have any any system at all here. I didn't have any covers. So I thought this was the simplest. But one consideration at least uh, is to allow you save some space here. So I didn't want it to have too, it coming becoming too much of a nuisance in here. And of course I have to have it covered up. So I'll put some some kind of cover on here and then uh, also um, I've seen many uh, systems where you have mounted a um, uh, motor on the, re at the rear here or at least driving it from the I would say the smaller end here and um, these two uh, you have almost equally sized uh, bronze bearings but at least there's a little bit thinner section here I didn't want to have the pull that such a belt would uh, would make on the drive here one way, uh, thereby possibly maybe a theoretical consideration, but possibly then um, at least not prolonging the life of the bearing here. So in this way here, I have also introduced a ball bearing, normal ball bearing here, but that should at least take care of some of the stresses that uh, one side of stress this, this makes. Of course, in this case, I would uh, guess I'll have the, uh, the drives, um, the drivers on the, in the rear here. Moving to the X-axis, I have uh, done the same as I have uh, on my Super 7, uh, mounted it to the rear of the cross slide. I've seen others that uh, designs that have uh, used the front, either directly here as an extension, which could be possible if you have a, a like uh, this is a shaft through system on your um, stepper, whereas you can mount the, the hand wheel there. But anyway, I don't like that too much, so I mounted it to the rear. And in this case, I also used the stepper motor with an integral uh, lead screw. 
so uh, I have it mounted in line with the screw here. I've done it in that way that I have a, a knot in the rear and a knot in the front here. So modify the uh, saddle a little bit. This is the setup I've decided to use, namely with a pair of um, plastic, uh, actually. Could uh, replace them with the bronze, of course, but these came with um, the, um, well, this type of uh, stepper motor with the built-on spindle. Um, this one is uh, screwed directly in as well as this one, but here I have a kind of a slot here. So that uh, when and if they somewhere I can just adjust with that. But anyway, a two screw, no, two uh, nut set up. I hope that um, will prove successful. And then in between here comes the block. I decided to have a little bit here to go on because uh, that uh, leaves me or gives me the best um, say travel or so that uh, this is flush now and I can then have the travel to this side from there to there or longer if I want to And uh, this gives me, as you can hear, a very, very firm and solid movement. But it's not a silky smooth ride as you get when you have a disconnected stepper. And on this, not able to disconnect the stepper here, this uh, way, because it's of this... Uh, is mounted uh, as a shaft itself but uh, I could have mounted this type and then um, on the cog belt a timing belt also and thereby also allowing me a sort of a bushing with a uh, set screw so I could physically disconnect it and get back to normal manual feed but on the cross line I still think it's okay and on the on the longitudinal axis, no problem to have uh, the extra resistance from the um, from the motor. On the side here, I'm going to mount uh, a thrust bearing anyway. And of course, it's preferable to have uh, uh, that as compared to the bushing. <laughs> 